Hello out there in internet land. My name is Troy Bernier, and we've got a super duper short sci-fi film for you today. It's called The Wait. The Wait. Commanda Layla Ross has returned from, uh, she's returned to Earth alone after a 33 year long mission to find a planet capable of sustaining human life. As a young woman, she left her family in Cornwall, England, full of hope and determination to save mankind. Now dejected, delusioned, and confronted by angry government officials. Layla is due to deliver her long-awaited findings at a press conference with the eyes of the world upon her, pressured to sugarcoat those results of the mission by the prime minister and his advisor. Layla must make a decision that will have personal as well as global consequences. Chilling. So we're going to have this film at the festival. It's going to be at the at the main main event uh, this coming week. We hope you can uh, check this out. And we actually have the director with us today, Miss Susan Lay. So let's bring her on. Let's beam her in and have a chat with her. <gasps> Hi, Troy. How, how are you? I'm well, thank you. How are you? I'm doing fabulous now. I'm so <laughs> thrilled that you're able to join us. Um, oh, you being alumni, you know, we this I've, I've got to make a count because we've got a lot of alumni this year. Oh, that's great. Yes, yes, we always get a few, but this year is special. We've, oh. I would say, twenty percent of the films are alumni. Oh, That's a very high number. Very high yeah. number. Yeah, yeah. And a testimony so. to your festival as well. Clearly. Yes, that's right. That's right. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, your last film was Kestov, which is Cornish for contact. And yes. this one is The Weight. So tell us, uh, since I gave a little thing about the film, tell mm -hmm. us about you. Give us a little background about the director and why she made this movie. Um, well, my background is in acting, um, and then I moved across into uh, filmmaking, so mm -hmm. producing, writing, directing, um, and the film came about when I was doing a postgraduate degree in film and TV, mm -hmm. and I had this idea um, uh, at that time of what if we are the only ones out there you know I'd, i've grown up you know child of the 80s you know all that thing that there is life out there mm -hmm. and it just suddenly struck me one day well what what if our earth is in this perfect goldilocks position and is that's it you know what do we do and uh, then this idea came about of well what responsibility are we leaving to future generations to mop up the mess of previous generations um and what about if there's a character that hasn't even been born yet as far as you know we're concerned um but then she's got to take on this responsibility um to try and find somewhere capable of sustaining human life yeah um yeah and just to, I wanted to explore failure as well. The fact that I think, you know, I've seen a lot of sci-fi where there's a there's, you know, there's uh, battles and issues and problems, but there's triumph. Mm -hmm. And I thought, well, mm -hmm. what what do we do when we fail? What do we do mm -hmm. when we don't know that there's mm -hmm. light at the end of the tunnel? How do we continue to put one foot in front of the other how do how, we survive yeah. those moments how do we cope how do we move on yeah, from that? yeah. you know you know there are um there are sci-fi stories like this and uh the 80s had a lot of them the 80s and um, early 90s had a lot of them um of course i think all of them ended in success but mm -hmm. it started out you know with you know horrible things taking place and, um, you know, in my opinion, those were the best stories because it teaches hope, mm. it teaches hope and how to cope. Mm. Um, Robotech, which has been one of the general themes of this, of these interviews, um, you know, uh, which was a, a Japanese anime 
that mm -hmm. converted into American uh, TV show. And it's been around, I want to say, since the 80s. And it's come back. And Disney now has the Japanese version of it. You know, right. it's coming back. Wow. It's that strong of a story. Yeah. Um, but from what, you know, the way I, I think that's that's a heck that's a heck of a position. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, that's that's part of knowing our history. Mm -hmm. you know, yeah, we celebrate the good days, but there was a what if script if they guys never landed on the moon. Mm. There was a what if script. Wow. It's actually in the festival this year. Really? Yep. Oh. Yep. Yep. Um, President Nixon, I guess that was Nixon. President Nixon had a script that if they had crashed on the moon, um, this is this was what he was supposed to read. Wow. My yeah. God. Yeah. So Tell us uh, a little more. Um, you know, this is uh, this story, the wait, and um, you know, a what if scenario. Mm -hmm. And you know, when we look at uh, the world today, you know, some people say, "Oh, we need another Earth." Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know, we we need another Earth because we're we're messing this one up. You know, mm -hmm. and, and I and being the geologist, I've got to remind folks that the Earth's going to do just fine without. It. Yes, <laughs> this is this is what the basis of the weight was was my frustration. I think thinking, particularly even the way I don't know about um, in the US, but definitely in the UK, there's a lot of talk about a climate crisis and a climate emergency. And I always want to say, oh no, no. It's not a climate crisis. It's a human crisis. Yes. It's a human emergency. Climate, she's going to be fine. The oh. Earth's going to be fine. She will regenerate. Yes. We won't. Like Our species right. relies on this perfect climatic condition to give us life. And yes. we are destroying it. So, yeah, it's... Um, I suppose for me it was almost like a cautionary tale writing. Mm -hmm, like, mm -hmm. it's like this is mm -hmm. this is what could come to pass if we continue the way we are. And I I suppose strangely, even though I know the weight um, is very heavy, my hope is that I I do think we can change it. I don't think we need another Earth. Our Earth is perfect for us. I think we just. I say just. <laughs> You're being kind. You're being yeah. kind. <laughs> I think there's there's work we need to do, but I I have hope. I think that we can do it as yeah. humans. Yeah. 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 That's that's something. Um. So, from what you've created here, I, I actually have to. I'll just bring up one photo sure. right now, and. Um, this is this uh, this is almost your poster has I think is is this photo. Yeah. So mm -hmm. you know my my question is, uh, you know, so the, the weight is you know the weight on her shoulders and all of that, but you have this flag. This is the uh, flag of Great Britain, right? Yeah. And this is the flag of Scotland. Cornwall. Cornwall. Oh. That's the Cornish flag. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully, no Scots will be watching. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they'll be like, moron, you blimey, you know. <laughs> Holy smokes. Um, wow, Cornwall, that's that's awesome. Yeah. You know? No, I, I think that's neat. You know, um, who also did a lot of this in, in science fiction when they produced was um, Neil Bloomcomb. You familiar with Neil Bloomcomb? No, I'm not. Uh, District 9. Oh, yes. Okay. District 9, Elysium, Chappie. Um, when he started making his other iterations, uh, the films, he um, would always have a South African flag somewhere on their ships or something. Oh, amazing. Uh, yeah, yeah. And only if you looked and knew what the South African flag looked like, you'd know. Oh, he, you know, he's putting his sticker on. Hey, man, science fiction is not only made in the U.S. Yeah. <laughs> Well, yeah, this is the thing is that there's quite a lot of um, we've got a satellite station called Goon Hilly in which we, it, it yeah. was in Kestav. Yes. Um, and 
it's that and also with new key airport in cornwall um mm -hmm. going to launch you know space uh, satellites and things like that i think that there's quite a lot of um talk and uh, thought to the future of cornwall um being more involved in space exploration in some way or another yeah um so i wanted the cornish flag and just on this picture here the um, badge that she has above the patch on her elbow with the rocket mm -hmm. um that actually you you wouldn't be able to spot it unless you're looking for it but the name of the the number of the spacecraft yeah it's endeavor and it's tr10 and tr10 is the beginning of the postcode for the area that I was living in when I wrote it in Cornwall. <laughs> <laughs> Make sure you have a bunch of these, you know, because selling merchandise is the, best <laughs> yeah. way to, is the best way to start getting a return on your film. Yeah, People will buy, fans will buy it. Fans will buy it. <laughs> so make sure you're able to make more of them. That's awesome. That's a good point. Good yeah. point. Yeah, that's that's neat. Very, very neat. I'm loving it. Yeah, and this was our um, our set was brilliant because we shot it in a uh, a really big house uh, called Trefusis. Uh, it was right. a Trefusis Estate down in right. Flushing in Cornwall, and the right. owner of the estate very kindly allowed us to shoot in his home. So um, mm. we cleared out his lounge, which is sort of the, called the library, and we were able to just leave all of the, the fantastic books and uh, hopefully help to make it look like some sort of cabinet office. Yeah, um, yeah. And what I wanted was to um, make sure there was all this little detail that, that wasn't necessarily spoken about, but just helped to really build the sense that this world was... Uh, on its knees and the resources were really scarce so the fact that the the um these are old i don't know whether you used to have them in the states but in the uk we used to have old milk bottles that used to be delivered mm -hmm. door to door yeah. um so then the water is delivered in these um bottles wow. yeah, yeah um and we've got the masks on the table because it's not safe to go outside without wearing these masks and particular filters yeah yeah and all of their um again you won't see it unless it's it's really close up but the the right. detail of the costume the jacket of the prime minister he's got sort of um patches on his jacket and fraying because me and the costume designers spoke about the fact that because resources were scarce Wow. that status equaled the amount of material that you can could wear. Pos could possess. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Um, and there was like dirt. They were taking him outside and sort of <laughs> mocking up his suit to make it look as though there had been dust from the environment that had gone on there. So we really, I mean, I, I geek out about things like this. So I really enjoyed um, getting into the real detail in the film and putting this yeah. so that it just helps to feed even on a subconscious level what the audience that's right that's right the really. subtext yeah so so let me ask you this question we, and you kind of covered some of it already but in what ways do you hope your film influences or impacts its audience and there there are several messages that you hope viewers will take away from this. yeah well well and that really puts us in what other film festivals have the film played in? Right, yeah. Well, um, I think, yeah. Um, um, what I would love the audience to take away is, is I suppose that question of what if, and also what, what do we have to do now right. in right. order to prevent this from happening? Right. Um, and I personally, my personal feeling is that we can't consume the way we're consuming as a species if we're mm -hmm. going to survive so it's then looking at looking at that and i mean i i need to look at that myself I, mm -hmm. you know just sort of 
I suppose turning our brains around to thinking in that way. Um, but as far as other festivals are concerned, um, obviously it's an absolute pleasure to be part of your festival. Um, and uh, I've been in the, uh, been selected for the Cornwall Film Festival as well. Um, and I've, yeah, just with submitting and there's been a few we haven't been successful for. Um, but I find it really, um, I find it a really humbling and a real honour to think that the weight is going to be shown in Miami, you know, and, and <laughs> yeah. in a completely yeah. different part of the world. And it just, yeah. I think that's, I think that's amazing, the fact that, and what I love about film is the fact that I think that it can be in a completely different place, different languages used, and yet there's something so human about it that hopefully right. people can right. connect with and it will right. resonate with. Right. Um, so I find that really exciting and really, wow, <laughs> blows my mind. No, that's, yeah, that, that's, that's, that's cool. There, there will be an audience that will ingest this. And, um, you know, people are going to be surprised by it because it doesn't have that, you know, spin that so many people are used to. Can we take a look at a, a, a clip from it? Sure. From the film? Okay. Let's see, where are we? Right here. I just don't understand how a 33-year mission can yield such catastrophic results. With respect. Ambassador, it took decades to discover that you couldn't terraform Mars. Yes, but, but... The failure doesn't lie with Endeavour or any of my crew. This is a PR nightmare. People need some hope. People are dying anyway. Dying anyway. I mean, come on. Come on. I'm the one that's going to have to tell It doesn't matter. About So, so can you share an unexpected or memorable moment that lasted a lasting impress? Lasted a la left a lasting impression on you. Mm, do you know what? Actually, that strange, was one of them. Yeah, I do, <laughs> it was actually one of them is shooting that scene. Um, the actors were brilliant, and they really went with me on it. Um, I was really trying to, yeah, pump up uh, the app, you know, pump it up and make it uh, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. really high stakes. And mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and it was just wonderful when they all really got into it and were overlapping each other and uh, and some of the improvised lines as well that came out were kind of shocking and actually shocked the mm. actors saying it, playing mm. those kind of characters. Um, it, yeah, the 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 energy in the room was just True. yeah something that, and it was the first day of filming as well, so it was. Did uh, did the film lovely. play? Uh, did you did you submit the film to? And you don't have to tell me whether you got accepted or not, uh, but did you submit it to Boston, to the one in Phoenix, to the one in Utah, some of the other sci-fi festivals, Berlin? No. I did. Ah, uh, I did submit it to. I don't think it was a Berlin sci-fi festival. Uh, London? Uh, not yet, no. Oh, um, okay. Don't, don't wait too much time now. I won't, I won't. I must admit, I, um, I'm i still sort of plugging away, trying to yeah. find... There's Their event, I think, is in May. Oh, okay. So, so I may have been um, a bit late for that one. Yeah, yeah. That's Louis mm. Savoy's event. Mm. Um... So let me also ask you ask you this. Uh, so how do you feel, you know, how do you view the evolution of film and storytelling with the advent of new technologies and platforms? Do you think that this shapes opportunities for actors and filmmakers? Hmm. I think I'm quite a cautious person. And I think that even, and with new technologies, I tend to be cautious until I think I mm -hmm. I know them a little better mm -hmm. um I think with all things that 
we humans make there are you know positive and negatives and um I think yeah I think we just have to proceed with caution because I think that you know film is still very young in comparison to other mediums like theatre um so I think you know who knows where it will go but I think personally I connect more with stories that I feel have got real humanity and I think that I think that with technology that can still be present but I would Mm -hmm. be concerned I think if it completely overlapped any human element um I think even you know for example when I see like a a CGI tiger there's something in my brain that goes that's not real and it Mm -hmm. it pulls Mm -hmm. me out of it Mm -hmm. um and I think even you know with sci-fi sometimes when things are over um computer generated and uh, you know the, there's a lot of vfx i do sure. times it pulls me out a bit so sure. i think i'm a bit yeah a little bit old school in the sense that i quite like thinking that something is tangible mm. so even if it's made in a, a tiny model <laughs> filmed it's still i think my brain goes oh, okay yeah this is real and i connect to it more so uh we're gonna go into some more fun stuff here okay um, what was your favorite film this year or last year? Is that a film I saw last year or a film from last year? Because I sometimes I I saw I saw Arrival for the first time last year, and I know that's a few years oh, old now. Yeah, but I love <laughs> it. But I sometimes I'm a bit late to the party. <laughs> Excuse me. That's okay. No, that's okay. That's normal for a lot of sci-fi creators. Many of them were oblivious. <laughs> to a lot of the sci-fi that's out there. And I think that's so pure because when you get their reactions, it's like, man, I wish I could bottle that. That's that's great. You know? Yeah. So that, I, I think that's good. That's okay. That's okay. Yeah. There are a lot of films that I miss that I have to catch up on because during the festival season, you know, I'm watching hundreds of films. Mm. So, um, you know, I miss a lot of stuff and I have to wait, you know, sometimes or, or trade sleep for it. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, this is. I, I remember a director saying to me years ago, and I think it's so true that film, uh, books, songs, art in whatever form, will find you when mm. you're ready mm-hmm. for it. And mm-hmm. I've often had that where I will see something that's years old, and everyone yeah. else has been talking about it for ages, and it. Yes. Was- hit me at that right time when it's like I needed to watch that film I needed to receive its message and it needed to land with me at that point so yeah yeah so arrival was that for me last year wow um, yeah it was an excellent piece of work that was yeah. one of the best sci-fi films of all time it, yes it's it exceptional Agreed. so let me ask you this now okay and this is our last question to be honest um are you a Star Trek fan or a Star Wars fan or both Star Wars. I haven't really seen much Star Trek, but yeah, Star Wars. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Was that the wrong question? Am I going to No, be no, it? no. It's all part of, you know, <laughs> these surveys that we have to participate in based on our sponsors and things. Okay. Okay. All right. So do you have a favorite movie or series? Yeah, my my well, I Don't I've tell me it's Queen Charlotte now. It's not Sorry? Queen Charlotte. It's not Queen Charlotte, is it? <laughs> no. <laughs> no, I do you know what one of my favorite films is um a German film called Tony Erdman by Marinade. Okay. Love that film. My favorite film of all time, it, Back to the Future. Oh I my god. Absolutely. Really? Love that film. Wow. 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 <laughs> okay. Okay. I feel like there's slight judgment in your voice. No, it's just different. <laughs> That's all. It's just different. Yeah. Just if we there's there's a large dedicated uh, there's a large group of dedicated fans with uh, Back to the Future. You know, there's a mm. lot to it. So I totally get it. Totally get it. For me, it was cool. You know, it was cool. I enjoyed it. You know, I think it was that. I, 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 it's the kind of film you could watch over and over, like Indiana Jones. Yes. Yeah. You know? I think that's the thing. I really love that, and I really love the fact that it 
stood up to after I'd studied about film as well. There are mm -hmm. a lot of films mm -hmm. I would watch mm -hmm. again and go, oh, God, oh, no. And that film, I was like, oh, yes, actually, there's this element and that element. And, yeah, I've, I yeah. liked it more. Um, yeah. But, yeah. Well, listen, um, I'd like to show that clip one more time because it is so sure. powerful. It is so powerful. Hold mm, on. Thank you. And then we're going to end and just sure. hold, okay? Okay. I just don't understand how a 33-year mission can yield such catastrophic results. With respect, Ambassador, it took decades to discover that you couldn't terraform Mars. Yes, but... but the failure doesn't lie with Endeavour or any of my crew. This is a PR nightmare. People need some hope. People are dying anyway. Dying anyway. I mean, come on. Can I'm the one that's going to have to tell It doesn't matter about you. Man, I just had to play that one more time. I'm going to oh, watch the film again. Oh, so, really? But, <laughs> man, but thank you so much for coming on board, Susan. I really appreciate it. And um, I think it would be quite nice if you could sign up to be a panelist on one of the virtual sessions, which is in about a week from now. Um, okay. If you have time, um, I think one of them are in the morning and maybe the science behind science fiction. That might be early enough or... The one that's early, pick the mm -hmm. one that's early because the time zone. I know. Yeah. If, if it's not a problem, come anytime. But if it is, you know, be something convenient, uh, do that. We may because we're probably going to hold it live. We're probably going to do our panels live. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Broadcast <laughs> on like, three different channels on the internet at the same time. You know. Amazing. Do some crazy stuff. So yeah, but thank you once again. Uh, fabulous film. The way the acting mm -hmm. is spectacular. Um, uh, stay in touch with it and we'll see you during a virtual festival. Brilliant. Thank you so much. Thanks for having Thank us. Thank you. Bye. Bye.